glory to God. Thank you, Pastor Bob, for giving me an opportunity to share just a little bit with you tonight. I um, thought about what I would say, if I would preach a fiery message or just give you a testimony. <laughs> Praise God. Um, I thought I'd go with just a testimony tonight, how the Lord has been good to me. Praise God. Has he been good to you? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your goodness, for your grace, your mercies, your love. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you for Jesus Christ who died, gave his life for, for our salvation. Thank you for eternal life. Thank you for tonight. And we ask your presence. We ask you to unveil your word to us. We ask you for your encouragement in Jesus' worthy name. And all that agreed said amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, I'm going to give you just a testimony about myself and uh, talk a little bit about um, some of my experiences in uh, the Philippines. I spent two weeks over there, had a wonderful time. Praise God. I counted a privilege to have attended um, Rama Bible Training Center. And upon graduating, I worked with Kenneth Hagen Sr. before he passed away. Got a chance to travel with him. Uh, doing crusades all across the nation, and um, I got to see some really amazing things. Uh, the Bible says that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Hallelujah. So it's great to be able to get faith just by hearing the preached word. Amen. Hallelujah. But it does something extraordinary for your faith when you actually see God do miracles. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus was talking to the disciples. He says to them, blessed are the eyes that see the things that you see. Hallelujah. So I got to see God do some things. And um, I, I like to say that my faith went from here to here. Glory to God. I was in a meeting. This happened at Rama campus. Uh, they had, Rama has what's called healing school uh, Monday through Friday and uh, they minister to the sick all week long praise God people come from everywhere and we had this one woman that come in she had one leg shorter than the other so she came in with a limp and um, and so the evangelist sat her down in the front now this guy his name is Jim Hockaday he worked with Kenneth Higgin for many years as well He's out in his own ministry now, doing a lot of traveling. Have you heard of him? Well, Jim Hockaday. <laughs> Praise God. Uh, and so Jim Hockaday, miracles follow him. He's an evangelist. Miracles follow his ministry. And so he's seen it happen again and again and again and again. So he's teaching in healing school this particular day when this woman comes in. And he sits her down, gets her butt square in the seat, have her stretch both legs out. And you can see that one leg is actually shorter than the other. Did y'all see that? And so he calls us up. He says, now y'all come up here and y'all watch this. <laughs> so I got right, right over her, looking over her shoulder. And I watched as that one leg grew out to length, saw it with my own eyes. My faith went from here to here. Hallelujah. <laughs> we serve an awesome God. Some of you have been believing God and believing God and believing God. Listen, don't give up. Don't you quit. Don't you throw in the towel. Just because you haven't seen it yet doesn't mean that God's not working. Right. Hallelujah. I was on a military assignment. Washington, D.C., Andrews Air Force Base. <laughs> Glory to God. Air Force man. January 2009. And I had never been really sick in my life. Uh, you know, you catch a cold, I'm macho, you shake it off, you keep going. But uh, this thing knocked me, knocked me out. 
And uh, I was walking along, and one of my buddies came along, and he took me by the arm, and I couldn't walk right, and my legs wasn't working right. And uh, he said, Son Brown, you better go to the hospital and get yourself checked out. Now, I'm a person of faith, <laughs> but this time I agreed. I better go get this thing checked out. And I did. And they diagnosed me and said um, that both of my kidneys had shut down. Glory to God. <laughs> I usually pause right there because people always go, oh. <laughs> now watch this. When the devil tells you that you've got something incurable, if you go, oh, he's got you. Glory. I didn't do that. Remember now, I'm not Mr. Macho really, but my faith is already here. So when this thing hit me, I just, I was like, God, what is this all about? What is this all about? This ain't nothing for you. What is this all about? And God spoke to me. God says, I'll bring you out of it. <laughs> God says, I will bring you out of it. Hallelujah. I was at Walter Reed Army Medical Center. Six weeks I was there doing dialysis. Glory to God. Every morning, watch this now. Every morning I had four doctors walk into my bedroom. Four doctors saying, Sergeant Brown, if you don't get your kidney functions back within 30 days, you will never get them back. Have you guys heard that song? Whose report will you believe? <laughs> Whose report are you going to believe? When the rubber meets the road, whose report are you going to believe? Hallelujah. Sergeant Brown, if you don't get it back within 30 days, you'll never get it back. <laughs> As Brother Hagen used to say, thank God we got inside information. Hallelujah. Information inside the Bible, that is. We got the word of God. We can trust in God with all of our hearts and lean not unto our own understanding. Hallelujah. The word of God says we're healed. We are. If the word of God says we're healed, we are. If the word of God says we're healed, we are. Himself took my infirmities and bare my sicknesses. Did he take yours? With his stripes, we were healed. Then we are. Whose report are you going to believe? Every morning, four doctors. The Bible says that the devil comes as a roaring lion. I had four roaring lions in my face every morning. I was uh, doing a dialysis session, and the nurse was kind of talking to me, and she was kind of giving me the lowdown, you know, preparing me for the worst, and, and I just looked at her. Now, normally, Naomi said something Sunday. She says, you listen to what the doctors say, but in your heart, you stick with what the word says. Okay, she said that Sunday. You remember that? And so, you know, the nurse was kind of giving me the worst, and I spoke back to her. <laughs> I said, oh, I'm going to be fine. <laughs> yeah, she did. She gave me the blanket stare as if this guy is in denial. Not in denial. I'm in faith. I'm in faith. Hallelujah. I believe God. I already heard from God. <laughs> say what you want to say. I already heard from God. Hallelujah. Now, to make the story interesting, 
some things were going on in my life at that time where I was actually kind of angry with God. And this might help somebody. But I prayed this prayer in my thoughts. I couldn't even pray right. I said it in my thoughts. I said, Lord, I don't even know if my faith will work. I don't know if you're going to hear me. I don't know if you're with me. I don't know. And therefore, I don't know if my faith is going to work. So I got up that Sunday morning. I went across the street to a Baptist church. (laughs) How many of you know God uses the Baptist too? (laughs) I went over to a Baptist church. Now remember that prayer. God, I don't know if you're with me. Therefore, I don't know if my faith is going to work. It's what I said in my thoughts. God heard my thoughts. And so I got to the church and they did the praise and worship and uh, the preacher got up and he read two verses of scripture. He read Hebrews, the just shall live by faith. And then he read where it says, and lo, I'm with you always. Then he made this statement. If your faith is going to work, you got to know that God is with you. Now, that's God answering. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Hallelujah. So I got into faith. I got into faith. God, you said you're going to bring me out of this thing. The doctors gave me a 30-day window. You don't get it back within 30 days. Forget about it. Well, 30 days came and 30 days went. And I'm still doing dialysis. 60 days came and 60 days went, and I'm still doing dialysis. Six months came and six months went, and I'm still doing dialysis, but I heard from God. Just because I hadn't seen the answer yet, that means that God's not working. Hallelujah. I'm in faith. I'm in faith. I was driving it down. My friend called me, my best friend, my prayer partner. I laugh at her today. But she and I, we, she would call each, we would call each other late night, 12 o'clock at midnight. We'd just get on the phone and just pray, 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 pray. Hallelujah. Not about this situation, but just all the time pray. And when this happened, now she knows me. She knows I'm a person of faith. And so I called her, I said, uh, the doctor said that I, my kidney shut down. And immediately she just goes to boohooing and crying and carrying on. And I went, click. <laughs> because when you're going through a situation, you need people that are going to be in faith with you. And she understood what that meant. <laughs> so she took a moment, got herself together and called me back. I said, okay, now let's try this again. (laughs) And she stuck with me through it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Ten months later, God told me to quit taking the oral medications. I was taking them. Quit taking the medication. I didn't say anything to the doctor. I just did what God told me to do. Hallelujah. And I would go in every week to get my labs done. And without the medication, my labs were getting better and better and better. Well, that means something was working, wasn't it? (laughs) Labs are getting better and better. I was doing dialysis at home, peritoneal dialysis. And um, so two weeks before my appointment, I quit the dialysis. Didn't say a thing to my doctor. Went in to get my labs done. Now, he's from Hungary, so he speaks with the accent. He says, Mr. Brown, your labs are excellent. I'm not doing dialysis now. (laughs) But my labs are excellent. That means something's working, isn't it? Glory to God. Hallelujah. The doctor says four or 30 days. God says, I'll bring you out of it. I'll bring you out of it. And he did. January would be five years since I had to do any dialysis. Five years since I've seen the doctor. (laughs) 
Hallelujah. We serve an awesome God, y'all. Hallelujah. You just got to hold on. Hold on for yours. I was reading in the Bible. The Bible says, St. John chapter 4, talking about a nobleman, the nobleman's son. He came to Jesus. His son is at the point of death. He says, come, Jesus, come to my house and lay your hands on my son. Heal my son. Jesus says, except you see signs and wonders, you won't believe. A lot of people have to wait to see it before they believe it. And that's not how faith works. You got to believe it before you see it. Hallelujah. Mark 11, 23. When you pray, believe that you receive, then you will have. Hallelujah. We get it backwards sometimes. When we pray, we want to wait till we receive it, and then we say, okay, Lord, I believe I got it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus, come down before my child dies. Jesus simply said, go your way. Your son will live. And the man believed the word. How many of you believe the word? <clears throat> what scriptures are you standing on? Hallelujah. What has God said to you about your situation? <laughs> are you standing on the word? Or are you waiting to see the miracle first? Got to stand on the word. That's right. Hallelujah. Now the doctors are doing what they can do. We understand that. But you got to stand on the word. Stand on the word. Stand on the word. God showed me a dream years ago. In this dream, I saw myself in a, in a park. It's like a wheat field. And um, it was this dog-like creature. That came running up to me, not to attack me, but he just came running up to me, and he had a scroll in his hand. And he brought me this scroll, and he handed it to me, and I read the scroll. I don't, even, I don't even know what was on the scroll, but I saw myself reading it. And when I read it, I just started boo-hooing and crying and weeping. Have you ever seen a grown man cry? In this dream, I'm just weeping and carrying on, like, because I read what the scroll was saying. And just at that moment, now I stood like so, facing this creature. And behind me, I knew that the throne of God was there. I didn't look. But I heard God say, stand on my word. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, the reason that a lot of us are defeated is because we're reading the scroll that the devil has given us. We're listening to his messages, listening, paying real close attention to his suggestions. Hallelujah. You listen to what the devil says, you'll be defeated every time. Hallelujah. But if you do what God said, stand on my word. You win every time. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Isn't Jesus wonderful? Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. I uh, took a trip to Philippines. I'll tell you a little bit about that. Um, it was a wonderful trip. You're in for a treat, brother. <laughs> uh, God uses... A simple medium like Facebook to make this all happen. I met this pastor on Facebook. <laughs> and so long story short, I've got lots of Filipino friends on Facebook. I've never been there before this, meet, this uh, trip. And uh, you know, with the Air Force, I've traveled the world, but I've never been to the Philippines. And somehow, God put the Philippines on my heart through Facebook. 
And so I met this pastor and he asked me to sponsor uh, a feeding program that he's doing over there. Now, you know, that could have been a scam, but I felt good in my heart about it. So I sent him, I sent him a donation. And out of that, he gave me an invitation to come and really preach an uh, a, uh, anniversary service is what it was. That's how it started. Praise God. And immediately, because I always wanted to go to the Philippines, immediately I said, yes, yes, absolutely, I'll come do it. And then a week later, after the excitement kind of wore down a bit, I said, you know, Lord, I never even prayed about that. I didn't even pray about it. But it was good. God, God allowed me to go. And so I got over there uh, intending to preach two sermons, two different churches, two Sunday morning services. I ended up preaching five times. God opened other doors. Hallelujah. He took me to, one of the pastors took me to one of the neighborhoods called Barangay. It's one of the poor neighborhoods, which is where he did the feeding program. And um, uh, I didn't know that he had, he had made a banner with my name on it <laughs> because I sponsored this. <laughs> He made a banner with my name on it and took it to that village. And so he told all of these people about Pastor Gil Brown from South Carolina. And they wanted to know who this Pastor Gil Brown was. They're excited. <laughs> so I went over there and they're excited to meet me and they're grateful that, you know, the Lord blessed me to bless them, uh, you know. Um, and so I got a chance to preach to them just a 10 minute salvation message and led them all in the sinner's prayer. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. People gave their lives to the Lord. Uh, this pastor is awesome. Oh, my goodness. He loves to get out among his people, his uh, members, go to their homes, visit them. And so he took me with him. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> it was great. And so we went to this one guy's house. His name is Eddie, elder guy, 75 years old. Eddie was laying there. This is good. Eddie was laying there uh, in severe pain, hip pain. He couldn't get out of bed. And the uh, pastor wanted me to pray for him. I said, okay, sure, I'll pray. Now, I was just going to do a, a simple father heal this brother in Jesus' name, you know, restore health, Lord God, in Jesus' name. You know, I was going to do one of those simple prayers. But when I laid hands on him, out of me came tongues, forceful tongues, as if I was giving a command. Hallelujah. Now, I learned to go with that. I learned to flow with that. Usually when I go to a newer place and I don't know the people, the people don't know me, I try to withhold that. Because you don't know if people are taught in that or not. But I learned, hey, let's, let's go with it. <laughs> this is the Holy Ghost. Let's go with it. So I laid hands on him, and immediately, it just came out of me for about 30, maybe 45 seconds, and then it stopped. And when it stopped, I stopped. And we left. <laughs> we left Brother Eddie on the bed there in hip pain. We went to visit somebody else. And while we were there at this other house, this other young girl, about 36 years old, she said, Pastor, would you pray for me? I'm having issues with my cervical spine. And I said, why? What's wrong with your spine? Well, she couldn't tell me because of the language barrier there. I said, well, no big deal. God knows. The Holy Ghost knows. So I simply laid my hand on her right there, just like that. And when I did, the power of God hit the back of my hand and healed her neck. Isn't Jesus wonderful? Yes. Hallelujah. And so I went, uh, we left there. <laughs> well, you know, you know, the Bible says that when Jesus worked a miracle, there went out a fame of him. Right. Same thing happened. There went out a fame. Pastor Gill from South Carolina. <laughs> Glory to God. So this woman, she's uh, one of the members of the church. She's about 70-some years old. She has a son who, praise God, um, uh, about mid-50s, I guess. 
Five years, a stroke, five years, paralyzed. Paralyzed, five years. Could not walk, could not feed himself. Uh, she says, Pastor Gill, I'm going to have you, I'm going to bring my son to such and such a place. I want you to come and pray for him. I said, okay, sure. <laughs> sure. Hallelujah. So, uh, I guess it was the next day we went over to see her son. And he's sitting there, not in a wheelchair, but in a chair nonetheless. And he's kind of slouched over. He's got a bib on. He's drooling on himself. Okay, he's paralyzed. Hallelujah. And so I lay hands on him again. Out of me come tongues again. Hallelujah. I'm not opposed to praying in tongues, are you? Glory to God. Now this time it was a bit different. Hallelujah. I laid hands on him, both hands I think. And I just, and in the middle of praying in tongues, all of a sudden I start laughing in the spirit. Have you ever laughed in the spirit? Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, Kenneth Hagin would say that when you laugh in the spirit like that, that means you've got the answer that you've been praying for. Hallelujah. Now, the interesting thing is, when I started laughing, so did he, in the spirit. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. And so I left there, and I left him in the chair, left him there, knowing that I got the answer for him. I didn't see the manifestation right away. Hallelujah. I came back to the United States on Thursday, and I talked to the pastor again on Saturday. His name is Richie. I said, hey, how is Brother, Brother Richie doing? Is there any change? He says, yeah, Brother Richie is up and walking now. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. This man who was paralyzed, <laughs> paralyzed. Hallelujah. You're in for a treat, brother. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. So I told you about Brother Eddie. Brother Eddie was 75 years old with the hip pain. So we went to these different houses, and we came back. We finally came back to his house, and um, I was thinking, man, wouldn't we just hear? <laughs> wouldn't we just hear? And because uh, I, I thought we came back because Pastor Joseph, I thought he had left something there, so I just kind of stayed out in the car, and he went in, and then he called me in. Hey, Pastor Gill, come on in, man. So I, I went on in, and there's Brother Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> This is the guy with a severe hip pain. He's laid in the bed there. He couldn't get out of bed, but here he is, Amen. out of bed, Amen. totally pain-free, healed by the power of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. So I'm excited about what God has done, hallelujah, in my life, in this ministry, and uh, during this trip to uh, the Philippines, I'm already scheduled to go back again in May of this next year. Uh, I'm scheduled to do two more conferences, three-day faith and healing conferences in two different cities. So, uh, uh, hallelujah. You know, for, for many years, I have held the ropes, stayed here and held the ropes as others went. And I've given to the missions and and others have gone and, and have ministered. And it makes a difference when you actually get out there. Hallelujah. And your eyes are open to some things and you see that the harvest truly is great. It's a great harvest. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There's a lot of work to be done, guys. Hallelujah. I'm excited. I'm excited. Hallelujah. I met the governor. Uh, um. Uh, the, the mother of the paralyzed guy, yeah. formerly paralyzed guy, uh, she works with the governor's office. So she got a meeting. She got me to meet the governor. The governor gave me leave to do a Bible study with his employees. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> You're right about that. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
So about 25 of them came to the study, and, and, I, and I just preached a short little message. Hallelujah. Uh, I preached from uh, the parable of the, the, the supper, the guy that made the supper. He made a supper and bade many to come, and, yeah. and they all with one consent began to make excuses. Hallelujah. And so I preached about that, and, and, uh, and at the end of it, they all came to the altar, <laughs> weeping and praying and giving their lives to the Lord. Hallelujah. Isn't Jesus wonderful? Amen. Hallelujah. So I praise God. I praise God for that. I praise God for uh, uh, how he has blessed me in my own life, given me my kidney functions back. Uh, I thank God for uh, how he has blessed me during this trip, and I look forward to going again in May. It's going to be incredible. Hallelujah. I got my inspectors, my expectors way up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm open. You know, if you want to go with me, just let me know. If you want to go, let me know. Hallelujah. We're going to do an open air three-day meeting in uh, Victoria Laguna. Uh, we got uh, permission to use the mayor's auditorium. The mayor is in on it. Hallelujah. He wants this. Isn't God good? <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Pastor Bob. Amen. Come, on, come on up here. Praise God. Uh, Gil, uh, Brother Gill, come up here, and uh, there might be those here that would want our brother to uh, pray for you. And so uh, come on up. If you want, uh, they may be here that never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but the evidence of speaking in tongues. I believe this brother's got the faith. So come up believing that you're going to receive. And so. He's going to stand right here and just come on up. Amen.